Thank you. Uh, okay, folks, so Danny Kelly, as T says, and I am head of innovation at Vodafone. But just before we start, actually, I want to do a quick show of hands around the room. How many people actually have a 5G phone? Let me see a few. Okay, great. So I'm thinking about a third of the audience already have a 5G phone. So great. Off to a flying start. You're my 5G enthusiasts. You know all about 5G. You don't need me to tell you anything about it. You know why it's super fast. You know everything you can do with 5G. And actually, I'm just here for everybody else, right? Probably not, right? Let me, let me guess how it went. You got a 5G phone. I can see Paul shaking his head. You got a 5G phone. You got home. You heard it was super fast. And now you're wondering what was all the fuss about, right? <laughs> Correct. So you can't listen to your Spotify any faster. You can't watch YouTube any faster. I can't stream the football any faster. Kids can't watch Peppa Pig in the back of the car any faster. In fact, 4G did everything. Why did I need 5G in the first place? Well, don't worry. I'm here to tell you all about 5G. I am here to tell you that you're just ahead of the curve, Paul. And actually, it's actually a super fast technology that will transform all of our lives. So just before we get into all of that, let's have a look about why actually did 5G happen? Why do we need 5G? And the answer is data. What do I mean? Well, actually, we're now in the era of data. So the way in which we communicate has changed. And that has created a massive explosion in 5G, the requirement for 5G itself. Why? Well, communication used to be person to person, just like this. Or maybe face to face or over the telephone, in some way person to person. But of course, we've changed. It's not me, it's you. We've changed in some way, right? So we now started texting people. We text the kids to say the dinner's ready. We text our other half in the same living room when we're sitting together. We, you know, so the way in which our format of communication has changed, and of course, that has brought data with it. And of course, as humans, we've also changed a little bit more because actually we'll talk to everything and anything that will listen to us these days. So we're talking to the machines. We're talking to Alexa, we're talking to Google, we're talking to Siri, we talk to our lights, we talk to absolutely anything that will listen in any way. And again, creating more data. Of course, we didn't just start talking to the machines. The machines got a little bit smarter. Not smarter than us just yet, but the machines have got smarter and the machines have started talking to the machines. So when the machines start talking to the machines, what's happening? More data. So we see this massive explosion in data across as the world around us is getting smarter. Everything's connected to the internet. Our houses, our cars, our kids, our pets, you name it, we're connected to the internet in some way. And as a result, we're creating this massive explosion of data, which is creating us a capacity issue. And so let me just put a few numbers to it, right? It'll help us kind of bring it to life. There's a roughly about 7.9 billion people on the planet today. You don't need to grab your phone and fact check that it's broadly right. But by 2025, that number will be closer to 8.1 billion people. Now, for 8.1 billion people, there is 41 billion connected devices. So a lot of devices. So what is it? What are those connected devices? Well, roughly 10.3 billion of those are our phones, our laptops, our tablets. That leaves about 31 billion everything else. So what's everything else? It's industrial robots. It's connected cars, it's our security cameras, it's our homes, it's our smart cities, it's our smart factories. Everything in some ways being connected to the internet. So therefore, we've got this massive, massive explosion of things that need to go across the network. That gives us our capacity challenge, and that's one of our first challenges. The next thing is, actually, that data is becoming a lot smarter. And when things are a lot smarter, they become a lot more autonomous, a lot more intelligent, and actually a lot more time critical. And this is at the heart of 5G, time critical. Why? Because when applications are time critical, milliseconds matter. And when milliseconds matter, we need 5G. So that's the two reasons of why we need 5G. We have a capacity issue on one hand, and we've got a time critical nature on the other hand. And that is where we really center our conversation today, around those key aspects of 5G. So, let's get into 5G itself then. So what is 5G? Tell me all about it, Danny, because we, we know we've got 4G on our phones, we know what we exactly do with 4G, but actually tell me about 5G, no problem. Well, first of all, it's important that we didn't just arrive at 5G. There's been an evolution of the Gs. So, we don't talk about it any longer, but remember, we did start way back at 1G. So, 1G did give us, actually, the ability to take our phones on the go. Mobile phone calls happened as a result of the introduction of 1G. Now, unfortunately, this is what the phones look like, so they weren't very mobile, and you probably needed a second mortgage to make a phone call on the things, right? But it was a mobile phone. That was roughly about 1983. 
we had a jump on circa 20 years. Thankfully, we moved on a bit. We changed and we introduced 2G. And 2G gave us the ability not just for phone calls on the go, but also text messages on our phone. And it also introduced new handsets just like this. And if you have one of these, maybe the Gen Z didn't have one, but I definitely have one. You probably spent too many hours of your life spend playing Snake, right? <laughs> now, now, have a look at the text message here. This is a real text message, right? And it's hard for Gen Z to get your head around this, right? I can't go out. I'm waiting for an email. That's true. We were still not liberated from our PCs. We were still stuck to the PC because we didn't have internet access on the go. So we didn't have Gmail on the go. So you actually, if you're waiting for an email, it was like waiting for a letter in the post. You stayed in, right? So we got internet services with 2G probably around about 2.7G. So just before we got 3G, internet services started to creep in. But of course, the form factor didn't support it. We really got that when we got 3G. So when we got 3G, we got three things. Phone calls, text messages, and picture messages, right? Get your head around that, Gen Z. Picture messages were a thing, right? We had to send picture messages on the go, and that's what 3G gives us. And it gave us some internet services called Edge. And the applications were born, and Steve Jobs famously introduced the iPhone, and a whole new raft of hardware and phones began to develop. And of course, the applications came along, and we started to lose our dependency on the PC. We moved towards the phone. Brilliant. And of course, that accelerated massively when we got what we have today, which is 4G. So 4G gives us multimedia streaming on the go. We can take our phones everywhere. We've got our Spotify, our Netflix, you name it. We can take our phones on the go. And there's pretty much nothing you can't do with your phone. Which brings us back to the opening point, which is, I've got a 4G phone. Do I really need 5G? Well, yes, it will happen. 5G is going to come along, and it will bring with it a whole new raft of applications. Like what? So whilst 1G through 4G was about the evolution of the phone, 5G moved way beyond the phone. 5G enabled effectively for us new applications such as robotics, autonomous cars, and <coughs> mixed reality solutions, autonomous surgery. All of these things became possible as a result of the introduction of 5G. What we're saying is 5G has changed the applications that we can deliver. It's not just about the phone. That was 1G, 2G, 3G, and 4G. 5G goes way beyond that. So why is that possible? It's really possible because of 5G's four superpowers. So it has four superpowers that really enable that change. Speed, latency, bandwidth, and capacity. Now, that sounds like a bunch of telecom speak, because it is, right? But let me simplify it in a bit of a way. So let's assume a 5G network is like a, a motorway. And the data that's moving across the network is cars. So if we have a motorway, which is now a 5G motorway, we can now drive the cars ultra fast. So 5G data moves across the network roughly 10 times quicker than the 4G data. So that's the starting point. And we're going to come back to the speed in a minute. But it is a super important speed. Capacity. We can now get lots more data on the network. And this is really important for 5G because everything's connected. Remember we said at the front? So now we have lots more things talking to the internet. We need to get a lot more capacity onto the network so we can get a lot more data, or cars in this case, onto the motorway. What happens next? It looks a bit congested. So we've got our next superpower, bandwidth. We can open up those motorway lanes now. We can spread them open to get all that traffic free flowing up their motorway. No more um, traffic jams. That's what 5G will do. And then we get to the key attribute of 5G, latency. So all of those cars can now move up the motorway without bumping into one another effectively. They can react quicker. So another way to describe latency is reaction time. So it's a really key skill, reaction time. So let's just talk about reaction time a little bit more because effectively reaction time equals real time with 5G and that is the true skill. So reaction time, if I hold up this clicker, it takes my eye, probably, I have to tell my brain, roughly 13 milliseconds, you're holding a clicker. Maybe it takes a little bit longer on a Monday if we've had a busy weekend, we're all the same, but actually, in general, it takes about 13 milliseconds. For some of the applications on 5G, we actually need to do that in better than 13 milliseconds. Autonomous cars, robotic surgery, these applications actually require a speed across the network of circa 2 milliseconds. So what are we actually saying? What we're saying is that the 5G networks of the future and today that we're building today actually have to carry data across the network quicker than the human central nervous system. So just let that sink in. 
5G networks are quicker than the human central nervous system. They are quicker than your human visual reaction time. That's how fascinating 5G is. Very different from 4G. So, how is that being deployed? Well, you're thinking, Danny, I've got a 4G phone, I've got a 5G upgrade, I'm not seeing all this quick speed. That's because the applications that can take advantage of it for you as consumers are still being developed. They'll be rolled out and you'll begin to use your phones in a very different way. Mixed reality use cases, entertainment, you know, lots of different things you'll be able to do on your phone in the future. But that doesn't mean it's not happening around you today. And it is happening today and it's impacting probably already in some way. So, what ways is it being impacted? Education is already being reimagined. Right here at Coventry University, they're deploying 5G networks to reimagine education delivery. Students are being taken inside the human body to understand how they can operate in the future. This is a completely immersive experience, but it's only possible because of 5G. You can see here, in the West Midlands, there's a 180 mile stretch of road has been developed to bring autonomous cars onto the roads in the UK. That will really radically transform our commutes to work. Safer, greener, effective, more efficient journeys, all possible because of 5G. So operating rooms across the UK are already deploying mixed reality use cases so that doctors from anywhere in the world can operate on someone anywhere else in the world using 5G and mixed reality. It's completely fascinating. Now, there's loads more examples that I can talk to you about around industry and how they've deployed it in manufacturing, transport, logistics, you name it. But actually, one of the easiest ways to understand the change in this technology is to look through the lens of sport. So I wanted to bring along a really simple sports demonstration today where you could see real time at play. So in this particular example, I've chose tandem, world class tandem cyclists. Why have I chose that sport? In particular, that sport is predicated on real time communication between the captain or the pilot at the front of the bike and at the back of the bike, the stoker. So they have to act in complete unison. When to brake, when to speed up, when to stop, when to turn, when to everything is communicated from the captain to the stoker. So what happens if we separate the captain and the stoker across a geographical distance but enable that communication across real time? Can they still hit their KPIs? Can they still do what they need to do? So let's go and have a look. I'm Sosan Dalaki and I'm a world champion Tandem. Εγώ και ο Χρήστο είμαστε μία ομάδα. Κάνουμε ποδήλατο μαζί και εγώ του δίνω οδηγίε. Αυτή τη φορά όμω θα του δίνω οδηγίε από το κέντρο ελέγχου σε πραγματικό χρόνο, χάρη στη νέα τεχνολογία 5G. Σήκω, σήκω, σήκω και πάρε ταχύτητα, Χριστό. Πίεσε δυνατά. Πάμε για πρώτη αριστερή στροφή σε 50, 30, 10. Έτοιμο. Πάρε, πάρε, πάρε. Αριστερά, αριστερά και πίεσε. Αριστερά. Πάρε, πάρε, πάρε. πάρε. Σηκώνεσαι όρθιο, μόλι βγει στην ευθεία. Πίεσε, 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 πίεσε. Κι άλλο, κι άλλο, κι άλλο. Κι άλλο. Πάμε για τελευταία στροφή, θα τερματίσουμε. Πίεσε δεξιά. Πάμε, 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 πάμε. Πάμε, τελείωσε. So look. It's a very, very, very simple demonstration here of 5G technology. All we're doing is taking the video food footage from Cyclist Head and across our network and back in real time. We're protecting that across the network and it happens as if they are riding side by side. So whilst it's a super simple demonstration of the technology itself, actually what you just witnessed was not super simple in any way. It was completely incredible. It was actually what I did not tell you about that video is that Christos, who is our cyclist in this particular video, was born at birth blind. He has never rode on a bike on the open roads himself ever in his life. And the first time he's ever done it was right here, what you've just seen, all as a result of real-time communication because of 5G. Let's go and meet Christos. Γεννήθηκα με μια σπάνια πάθηση και έχασα το 99% της ώρασής μου. Σήμερα για πρώτη φορά θα κάνω ποδήλατο μόνος μου στο βουνό. Με λένε Χρήστος Ανδαλάκη και είμαι παγκόσμιος πρωταθλητής Tandem. Εγώ και ο Χρήστο είμαστε μία ομάδα. Κάνουμε ποδήλατο μαζί και εγώ του δίνω οδηγίε. Αυτή τη φορά όμω θα του δίνω οδηγίε από το κέντρο ελέγχου σε πραγματικό χρόνο, χάρη στη νέα τεχνολογία 5G. Δύο. Έτοιμοι. Σήκω, σήκω, σήκω και πάρε ταχύτητα, Χριστό. Πίεσε δυνατά. Πάμε για πρώτη αριστερή στροφή σε 50, 30, 10. Έτοιμο. Πάρε, πάρε, πάρε. Αριστερά, αριστερά και πίεσε. Αριστερά. Πάρε, πάρε, πάρε. πάρε. Σηκώνεσαι όρθιο, μόλι βγει στην ευθεία. Πίεσε, 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 πίεσε. Κι άλλο, κι άλλο, κι άλλο, κι άλλο. Πάμε για τελευταία στροφή, θα τερματίσουμε. Πίεσε, δεξιά. Πάμε, 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 πάμε. Πάμε, τελείωσε. Μπράβο, Χρήστο. Μπράβο. 
μια περίεργα πιέστηση όταν έφτασα στον τερματισμό μόνο μου. Όταν συνειδητοποίησα πω αυτό που πέρασα δεν ήταν ο τερματισμό, αλλά η αρχή ενό αύριο γεμάτο νέε δυνατότητε. There you have it. Really simple for 5G, really incredible for Christos, right? Totally transformative, and that was only possible because of the change in technology. So um, 5G, when we think about it, actually 1G through 4G was without doubt an evolution of the Gs, but 5G is definitely a revolution of the Gs. It's not about the phone, it's about every other application that we can now reimagine that can help support our lives in different ways. And trust me, these will become more and more common in our lives as every industry is rediscovered and reimagined. Christos said it best at the very end of that video. He said, I didn't pass the finish line, I passed the start line of a whole new world of possibilities. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just at the start with 5G. 6G and 7G and the other Gs will come, but actually we haven't realized the full benefits of 5G yet. And please don't worry about your 5G phones. There will be lots of applications that will be totally transformative and you will actually appreciate what we've got. 5G, ladies and gentlemen.